Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Noah with Custom RC Mods and in today's episode we're embarking on yet another exciting build journey. I've got the FT guinea pig here today. You read the title. This is going to be one of the biggest planes I've ever built and the biggest plane of course is going to be my very own Custom RC Mods Concord. Although it's only 30 inches wide, it is 6 feet long so that's pretty significant. But this one is going to be a lot more powerful due to the two CPAC motors. I'll get into a second. Uh, so I'm really excited for this. This is obviously going to make many appearances on my channel as a good project plane as well as you know just all the other things that come across with this guinea pig want to flight test most popular designs out there anyway as you can see here it's a little bit different than a lot of my builds we're not starting here from the very beginning I'm actually already four hours into this build because I've already cut out all of the foam pieces two hours for cutting out the paper two hours for putting that into foam there and here we are uh, it's really nice because now I feel like I have a little bit of weight off my shoulders I'm about halfway through the scratch build process um, and here we are everything's looking really good so far I did actually have to go ahead and restock on my foam board I got like 30 sheets the other day because this is a solid six sheets of foam to get this thing cut out at home um, but overall we're there we just have to go ahead and build it and this thing uh, should be ready to fly pretty darn quick Okay, so now let's talk electronics for this build. And first thing I want to say is that this is going to be one of my very first twin engine builds. Running a fleet of 30 planes is kind of hard uh, to have a lot of those extra motors and ESCs in the twin engine builds that drive up the cost. Uh, so I kind of had to cut costs wherever I can just to make sure that I can maintain that fleet. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and diversify that with some twin engine stuff. And I'm really excited to do so. You'll have some more of that coming in the future. I already got some builds and electronics on order for that. Let's talk about these power pods here. These are Power Pack C-Spec power pods with 1250 kV Sunny Sky 2216 motors. These are the new A-Series, uh, which are a little bit nicer in my opinion after using uh, the X-Series. Now, those are technically their higher-end motors. However, the shafts are actually really soft metal, um, so they strip out very easily, and I found some sag issues in them as well, which is I don't know. It's, it's no good all around, but I am using the typical same ZTW 30 amp ESC on on there as well and then we have 10 by 4 or 5 uh, counter rotating slow fly props for each of these right here I have yet to go ahead and solder up my XT60 connectors uh, because of course I need some extensions to get it from the wings down into the fuselage where the battery is going to be I've got some 14 gauge wire on order uh, but again I still have to wait for that so I can do that and that's why that might this build might be delayed a little bit into the future but overall can't really complain Anyway, let's talk about my servos now, and these are more of the same. They're just the Miyose SG90 servos. These are actually brand new, so I'm not concerned at all about having centering issues. I've tested these extensively, and I have five of them here. Obviously, one for each of the ailerons, one for the rudder, one for the elevator, and then, of course, one for that cargo door in the back that I'll definitely be utilizing. Uh, so I've got another servo for that as well. I've also got a mess of uh, servo extensions. Obviously, you need those when you're having such a big plane servos on all different ends. I gotta go ahead and meet them up at the receiver in the middle there. I do have a few more of these on order as well as a Y cable which I'll get into why I need that in a second uh, but servo extensions are a, necessi a necessity for this build. I've also got four push rods and four control horns for the surfaces and then I've got a selection of receivers here as well. I was going to use uh, the Radio Master R88 8 channel receiver. These are brand new and they run off the FreeSky D8 protocol. They're very nice receivers as I can see. Obviously I haven't really tested them yet that much um, and for that reason I'm going to go ahead and stick to what I know. This is a genuine Spectrum AR610. However, this is only a 6 channel receiver so if you do the math we've got our throttle. We've got two throttles. We've got two ailerons if we're going to run dual ailerons and then of course we've We've got um, our cargo door and then our elevator and our rudder and that's nine channels or that's seven channels um, which is going to be too much for this so that's why I need to go ahead and pick up a Y harness because I'm going to be using this or again I could just use this eight channel and I'd have one extra channel to spare but again I'm going to go ahead and stick to what I know just to make sure we don't have any weird brown out issues or anything like that after putting so much time into a build. Now finally let's talk about my battery setup here. Uh, I'm going to actually be running two different uh, configurations. I'm going to be running the 5000 milliamp hour three cell right here this one's Eternity it's an RC car battery It's very heavy but I mean I guess that's kind of what you expect uh, this is gonna be good just to have a standalone single battery but also if I have some extra 2200 milliamp hour battery 
batteries, I can go ahead and run these two in parallel uh, to make a 3S4400 milliamp hour battery. Uh, in total, that's probably going to be a bit about the same flight performance. This one probably will be what I favor, but either way, it'll be more about what I have available to me at the time because I like to use this one as an RC car battery, of course, and as a goggle battery. So either way, again, I'm going to try to set it up so I have that option to run both. Um, through that there as well. So that's going to wrap it up for my electronics and pretty much my general overview of the build. Pretty much everything that I've thought about right now is going to be pretty stock on this build. This is my first time uh, actually running, you know, building this all together, of course. So I don't have too many upgrades to make. Obviously, I haven't had a lot of first-hand experience with it. Uh, so I'm going to do that and then later down the road, we can make some modifications and upgrades as I see needed. So let's go ahead, waste no time, get on up to the time lapse where we can start building. Guys, so as you can see here, my FT guinea pig build has been completed. I had to back you guys up to give you that wide shot and help you fully appreciate the monstrosity that is this cargo plane. Now, overall, I think that the build quality of this airplane is outstanding. Definitely one of my better builds, if I say so myself, which really does make sense. I put a little bit of extra time and care into this build, knowing that I'd want to keep it around and baby this thing. Hopefully, maybe even make it last for years, but again, it's foam board. I'm, I've got my expectations rather low. Either way, um, I'm really, really excited with this. I think the build went very smoothly overall. Most all of it was taken care of in that initial time-lapse session. That was actually on the first night, so after I got all the pieces cut out, the entire assembly only took a few hours, um, but then after that, I was just waiting on the fine details to fall into place. Mainly, I ordered these three and a half inch Bush tires for the back there, and they took like a week to ship. It was ridiculous. Amazon Prime, they say one day shipping, but really mean like a week. So I don't know what's up with that, but after all these setbacks, I'm finally ready to call this thing completely done, um, and I'm super happy with it all together. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this build in more detail. The design specifically here, we're going to talk about the things I don't like so much and also the places where I think this design really excels over the other planes that I've built. Now, first things first, the things I don't like. Guys, the, the fuselage is big. We, we know that. You can see how wide this thing is and it doesn't have any bracing except for, of course, up in the front uh, where there will be double layered or doublers in the foam. Uh, so that's kind of an issue in my opinion. Now, obviously for now it looks fine, but after a few hard landings or a crash or two, you're definitely going to get a lot of wrinkles and there's going to be probably a little bit of structural reinforcement that's going to be necessary in order to keep this thing flying. Now, I would have liked a full length doubler throughout the fuselage. I definitely learned that on my FT Bushwhacker, which has a similar issue. Um, and so I guess if I had to build this again, and maybe I will in the future, I'll try to incorporate that into this plane. Uh, just something that I know it's not my design, but I would definitely recommend looking into if you're trying to build this plane. Another thing I don't really like if you're a beginner is the nose. Now, the nose looks nice. It's not that hard. I put a lot of time into it to make it look as good as it possibly could. Uh, but, I mean, just the folds and things like that is really complex, and there are definitely simpler ways to do it, like with without having that taper in on the front there that would make it a little bit easier to build, especially, like I said, if you're a beginner. Another thing about this plane that's kind of unavoidable, but something that I definitely see as a fault is the large tail surfaces. Now, these side force generators on the back here are definitely going to be taking some hits here as I start flying it, so I'm expecting wrinkles to come, but there's also very little reinforcement, at least in the original plans, uh, for this horizontal and vertical stabilizer set back here. I would expect maybe even a paint stick to go underneath uh, the stabilizer. That's obviously a very easy mod to do, 
Uh, but, you know, it's something that if it was kind of put out there initially in the plans, it would be a lot easier to install. So other than that, not too much to say. I'm pretty happy with the design. I think it's nice and solid. Um, and let's talk about now the things that I think it really does well. So first things first, let's talk about the wing. Now, of course, these wings are pretty typical for flight test wings. Uh, however, I think this thing is nice and strong uh, for what it is. Now, of course, mine does have a carbon fiber aero shaft in it as a spar. Uh, I just really didn't want to take any chances. But even without it, I felt like this thing was super, super strong without a full length wood or carbon fiber spar. Uh, so if that's all you have and you're trying to make it super lightweight or whatever, I think this is still a very strong wing for its size at least, which is really nice. Another thing that's super nice is the fact that it still maintains its swappable nature. Now, I don't use swappables um, for my airplanes just because I think that, that takes a little bit of the structural uh, rigidity away from the airframe. However, you can use these power pods as swappable if you wanted to, and I think that's unique because you can swap in different motors just like that if you really uh, wanted to as well. So again, really nice to keep that flight test ideation in mind with this design. So. Overall, those are really the main things that I think it did really well. It obviously looks nice. I mean, I could just make a lot of general points about how this thing goes together. But in terms of the build, I like those things the most all together. In terms of the total build difficulty, I'd say it's probably middle of the road. It's not a very hard plane to build in terms of the techniques. It's no Master Series. It's no FT Biggin or Edge 540. However, just the fact that it's big means that it's a lot easier to wrinkle the larger pieces when you're trying to, you know, get the entire wing folded over. I had that problem. I have one little small wrinkle on my wing that's been driving me crazy. So again, you know, some things you really can't control, but either way, it's worth mentioning that if you're a beginner and you can get frustrated easily, I'd probably try to build something a little smaller before you dedicate so much time and effort and have a few struggles here and there building the guinea pig. So yeah. That's it for my thoughts on the build here. Overall, very, very happy. Let's talk about some of my electronic setups and things like that on this airplane, where they're all located. Obviously, you know where the, lo the motors and the servos are located. However, I did go ahead and elect to uh, mount my receiver in the back here. You might be able to see that antenna um, popping out right here. It is the AR610, so it's gonna be a good, uh, reliable spectrum receiver, but we're not taking any chances. Gotta have my antenna coming out the back, and then I have it mounted in such a way. Let's go ahead and open my cargo door here. All right, there we go. So as you can see, my receiver is right in there. It's on the top roof area ceiling of the fuselage, which is really nice, and that's another advantage of the wider fuselage that you can actually get your hands in there, plug things in uh, just like that. So receivers match right there, servers are all in their stock positions, and same of course for motors. Let's go ahead and talk about my battery setup now. Pulling off the nose here, I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside, and it's a 3S 5000 milliamp hour pack, and this one's actually straight from my Traxxas Rustler. I haven't really been running that thing that much recently. I've actually been using this pack more as a goggle battery, um, which I've been working really well at, uh, but now we've got an actual good use for it in this plane, and of course, I only have one of those batteries, so I went ahead and made a little backup plan. I've got two 2200 milliamp hour 3S packs, and I made a little parallel adapter so we can plug both these in. They'll stack side by side and go under the straps in there as well. And hopefully that will be a good option for this plane as well. Um, overall, I think that's going give, to give me about 10 minutes of flight time. And that balances out really well. As you can see, let's see if I can do some sort of CG thing without totally breaking the airplane. It's a little tail heavy at this point. We don't have the nose on. Um, so pretty happy with that altogether. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the battery, and I've just got my Y harness right here. You're probably not gonna be able to see it. Little Y harness going to our motors, just like that. Plug that in, I'm not gonna bother with the nose. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my ailerons working great. I still need to dial in my rapes and things like that. I've got my elevator back here. Got my rudder just like that. And of course, I've got my throttles. Let's go ahead and make sure my batteries are out of the way so I don't slice those up. Yeah, a lot of power, a lot of power. And also being a twin engine plane, I've also got my differential thrust setup. That's set up on this switch right here, so it's been off, but now as you can see, 
works just fine like that, and that's gonna be a godsend for taxiing on the ground. All right, guys, the last thing we need to go ahead and test before I wrap up this segment is the cargo door, and I did install that fifth servo down here, as you might be able to see. There's a small little arm there that holds the cargo door shut, and I've got a unique little spring mechanism that you'll see here in a second. I've got it tethered to this switch right here. And of course the rubber band is held at tension when uh, the door is up and locked, but when it's released that thing is flung open and of course everything inside the fuselage goes out of the airplane. So I don't know how well that's going to work up in the air. There's probably a lot of other factors that I'm not really thinking about. But hopefully it will be a consistent method of releasing the cargo door because that's definitely a unique feature that this plane brings to the table. Alright, so I think that's about everything I have to cover for this portion of the video. The next thing that we get to go out and do is maiden the airplane, which I'm obviously a little bit nervous for. This is definitely going to be the biggest, most powerful plane I've ever flown, which I'm really excited to do, but of course, if things go south, that's a lot of time that I put into this airplane that I really would like to have back. So, either way, there's nothing to it but to do it, so let's go ahead and get this thing out and flying. All right guys, so we just pulled up here out at the field and it's time to go ahead and fly the FD guinea pig. Got my moral support assistant, um, Alexander. He's a veteran guinea pig flyer. So he says that everything's good to go. I'm not totally sure, but we're gonna find out here pretty quickly if this thing's gonna fly or not. CG's dialed. I think I got my rates where I want them. So I guess there's really not much else to do other than just to put it up in there. All right. You just sent that, jeez. Yeah. Around, hey, this thing flies like a beauty. I'm trying to keep this thing under control. I, I'm, I've got all these impulses just to do flat spins and stuff already. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna keep it nice and at least have one successful flight under before I start destroying it, but. We're out here, field's kind of wet. What are you doing? Does not need any, barely any down elevator to fly inverted. <laughs> oh yeah, negative G's on the first flight. I thought you were gonna push it all the way over. Oh no, I, 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 I couldn't. I've had too many planes die by that. This thing's fun. Race definitely could go a little bit higher. I mean, I'm not pushing a lot of stick, but. I'm also running this battery by feel like I always do, which on a twin engine is not a good idea if you get down in your low voltages, so. Whew. I think it's a little too nose heavy to hover. Happily. Feels a little nose heavy, I don't know. Did not, I, I've not put in a click of trim of this. It's very agile. I think my nose is popping down. I haven't, don't have any method of securing my nose other than just a little bit of friction pushing it right on, so. Can't really blame it, but. Uh, oh, I don't have my differential on either. All right, let's pop differential on. I'm not really in flat spin territory yet, but definitely is helping with the yaw. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip off my differential. Let's get up to a higher altitude and flick it off and bring her on in for a landing here. Again, I don't have any sort of, uh, I don't have any sort of voltage alarm or anything on this plane, so I'm just gonna be playing it by ear at this point to see where my voltage is at, so I'm not gonna go ahead and push it farther than I have to, so. Let's go ahead and, I don't really know if there's any wind. I'm just gonna start slowing this thing on down and bringing it around town for a safe landing.
Oh, there we go, that'll do. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for the video here. Denny flew great. This design is definitely worth the build. Um, we'll see how long it lasts in my fleet. Definitely more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts on this build all around. I think it's pretty successful overall. So yeah, catch you guys in the next video.